Android on Steam Deck has always been kind of a pipe dream. Most people will tell you to just not bother with Android games, or perhaps, you know, install Windows instead. And heck, when ETA Prime covered this, he installed Windows on his Steam Deck. But we've got something a little different. Yes, there's an Android emulator you can install on Steam Deck called Genymotion. Genymotion has a paid and free version. You can download the free version directly on the website, though you will have to contend with a watermark at the bottom left corner. So once you're on the download page, go ahead and download the .bin file. Once downloaded, you want to right click and click on Properties, go to Permissions, and check Is Executable. Then right click it and run it in Console. And then it'll install to a folder within your subfolder. Click yes, and just let it do its thing. It takes a little bit to install, but it doesn't take too long. Once you see this message, you can go ahead and exit out of it. Once you exit out of the console folder, you'll want to go into the brand new Motion folder that was automatically created. Click on that, and then you'll see a bunch of files. The one you want to look at is Motion. Yep, just Motion. There's no Genymotion.exe or whatever. So you can go ahead and run Motion by itself. You don't need to launch it in console, but I did anyways, just to make sure it works. Yes, you will have to register for a Motion account, so go ahead and do that. Once you get to this screen, you'll want to press the plus icon. These are all merely templates. It doesn't mean you actually have a Nexus 5 or a Pixel 2 or whatever. So we're just going to pick the template that closely resembles the Steam Deck. In this case, we're going to select the Amazon Fire HD 8. It's got the same exact resolution as the Steam Deck. For your Android version, you will need to select Android 9.0. I'll explain why in a bit. Move on to the next screen. Leave the processors at 4, and you'll want to up the memory size. You'll want to up it to like 8GB worth. As for VM heap size, I would increase it to about 1GB. In the next screen, you'll want to make sure the resolution is 1280 by 800 You'll then want to have the window style be windowed, but just for right now, we can make it full screen later. Click on next, and then use virtual keyboard for text input. Let it do its thing. And this is the reason why you had to set up Android 9.0. The ARM translation layer only supports up to Android 9. So click on 9.0 in this GitHub page, and then download the zip file. Once you click on 9.0 though, you'll be taken to this page where you can click on the download button to, well, download it. And you can just download it basically anywhere you want. Like right there. Typically you would use ADB to flash this, but there's an easy way to flash it through the emulator itself. Take that zip file you just downloaded and drag it directly into the window. It'll prompt you to install the zip file, let it do its thing, and once it does its thing, you'll be ready. Once the archive flashing is complete, it'll prompt you to restart the virtual machine. In this case, you'll want to. So go ahead and press restart now. You'll also want to install OpenG apps. There's a convenient little button on the side right there. Go ahead and click it and press accept. The main reason why G apps isn't automatically installed is because of licensing issues. But that's okay. There's an easy button to install it and it'll flash itself. This will install the Google Play Store, the official Google Play Store. You'll also be able to download things like the Google Play Framework, which is required for a lot of games these days. Once Open Gaps is installed, you'll want to restart now. Once you press restart now, it'll open up to the Open Gaps page. You can safely ignore it. Now you have a fully functional Android device in your Steam Deck. Well, it's not fully functional, but you know. You have the official Google Play Store and you can run a good deal of Android apps, though not all of them are supported. For example, this fairly new gacha game I installed called Memento Mori doesn't even show up in the Play Store, and if you try to use Aurora Store, it doesn't run. Same deal with Epic 7 as well. Games that make use of ARM64 don't seem to run in Genymotion. That's unfortunate, but that's to be expected. Of course, some games do work, like Sino Alice, directed by Yoko Taro. You have to play this game in portrait mode, Thankfully, there's an option to rotate your screen in Genie Motion, though I'm not going to bother with it. How about a game that you can play in landscape mode? Like, I don't know, Arknights. You can play Arknights on this device. I mean, if you don't have a phone, that is. Do you guys not have phones? And of course, you may be wondering, how does this work in game mode? Well, I'll show you. Now that you've done everything you needed to do, we're going to go into display and make it full screen now. We're then going to press confirm. 
and then we can exit Genie Motion and add it to Steam directly. All you have to do is navigate to your Genie Motion folder. If you don't know where it is, then that's your problem because there's no default directory it's installed at. You'll want to right click the executable file and add it to Steam. There, it's that easy. It's also worth mentioning that Genie Motion is a native Linux app, so you don't have to mess with things like Proton. And I even renamed my shortcut to Android because I can. So I click on it and then Genie Motion just runs. Click on that play button and your Android VM will just run. Beautiful, isn't it? Admittedly, it takes a little bit for the Steam Deck to fire up the VM, but once it does, man oh man, does it look really nice. Unfortunately, that free for personal use watermark is going to be there basically forever. And of course, just to prove that I'm not screwing around with you guys, take a look at that. I can just open the menu like that. I can even open the quick access menu as well. And of course, touchscreen works as well, though you will need to set it up on your Steam Deck. Here's how you do so. Go into settings, controller settings. You'll then want to go into edit layout and then go into action sets. You see that little cog wheel? You'll want to add an always on command. Go over to system and then touchscreen native support. You'll always want that on. Now the Steam Deck acts like a true touchscreen device instead of, you know, a mouse pointer. Now let's play some Ark Knights. You know, I gotta admit, it's been a long time since I've played this game, but I like that the game remembered my old auto deploy setup. My old units are probably out of meta now. Not that I really played this game extensively anyways. You know, Ark Knights isn't really an action game, but you ever notice how weird the frame times are? The graphs are all over the place. The game caps itself at 30 FPS, but even the frame times are all messed up, even when there really isn't all that much going on on screen, you know? All I can really say though is that the game was a resounding success. Well, getting it to run anyways. Of course, newer titles may not work that well in Guinea Motion due to reliance on ARM64. Maybe one day we'll get an ARM translation layer for ARM64 titles. Till then though, you have a more limited selection of games. Which for some is fine, but for others, especially those that want to play Fortnite or Genshin Impact or Tower Fantasy on the Steam Deck, Genie Motion isn't the solution you thought it would be. And now it's Q&A time. Now you may be wondering, was this the only solution available? In theory, no. But most of the other options require some form of dual booting, whether it's dual booting to Windows or dual booting to Android x86. And ideally, that's just not preferable. But what about on Linux? Now, what about Android emulators like BlueStacks or Nox Player or whatever? Well, unfortunately, virtualization software doesn't work if you try to run it through Wine or Proton. And besides, I really wouldn't trust those emulators anyways. That said, Google did release a beta version of their Google Play game services on Windows. Of course, given that Google didn't create a Linux version, we tried to run it in Proton and Lutris and Bottles with no success. As you may have guessed, this software that Google created uses virtualization, so it by default won't work in any compatibility tools. Google will need to make some sort of native Android version for this software. And I don't know if Google's gonna do that, but what about Anbox and Wadroid? Are those not solutions? Both Anbox and Wadroid require specific kernel modules that aren't typically installed on your typical Linux OS, including the Steam Deck. So immediately, it's kind of out of the question for a lot of beginners. Anbox is old and decrepit and mostly only really works well on Ubuntu. I've heard Wadroid works, but it requires so much tinkering around that it's not worth making a video on. And finally, Genie Motion itself isn't really the best solution either. Bigger games like Genshin Impact and Fortnite require ARM64. And currently, Genie Motion doesn't have ARM64 translation layers. As far as I understand, any ARM64 translation layers exist on Windows. There's also the elephant in the room, controller support. Believe it or not, many Android games support controller inputs, like the aforementioned Fortnite port on Android. Unfortunately, there just isn't enough documentation on Genie Motion's website. I know the Linux version of Genie Motion is based on Kimu, but I'm not really apt with Kimu. Perhaps someone can help me out. All in all, it is possible, but it's not the solution you were looking for. If you wish to directly support High Tech Low Life, you should check out the link in the description below for our Patreon page. And if you like this video, you should give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well. And if you want, you can also join my Discord server. As always, links in the description down below for all of this.